Something that is essential to understand PTP is that it establishes a master-slave synchronization hierarchy. Consider a set of ordinary clocks, as well as some boundary clocks. And perhaps also a transparent clock and an ordinary switch. And let's assume that they are interconnected to form a network. Now, when we talk about anything related to the master-slave behavior in PTP, transparent clocks do not really play a role. In other words, transparent clocks are transparent to the master-slave behavior in PTP. I guess that's why they are actually called transparent clocks. Anyway, the point is that when it comes to the master-slave behavior in PTP, transparent clocks are invisible. We can mentally just replace them by a multipoint link. Regarding ordinary switches, they are just completely invisible to PTP, except for the fact that they degrade the precision achievable for the synchronization of clocks. So an ordinary switch, and in fact any non-PTP aware network device, can be mentally replaced by a multipoint link as well. Okay, so what we have on the screen now is actually what is visible to PTP clocks. So, what's the first thing that clocks do in such a network? Well, the first thing they do is to establish a master-slave hierarchy. That is, they execute a protocol to establish who should be the master of who and who should be whose slave. In this particular hierarchy, we have that this master here is the master of three other clocks, namely the ones below in the hierarchy. The clocks on the second level of the hierarchy, in turn, are masters of the clocks in the third level of the hierarchy. This continues until there are no clocks left that are both a master and a slave, and all clocks at the bottom of the hierarchy are slaves. The clock at the top of the hierarchy is called the Grandmaster Clock. All clocks in the network ultimately derive their time from this clock. This works by having first the clocks in the second level of the hierarchy synchronized with the Grandmaster Clock. Next, the clocks in the third level of the hierarchy synchronize with their masters, which are the clocks of the second level. This continues until synchronization is achieved through all levels of the hierarchy. At this point, all clocks are synchronized with the Grandmaster Clock, either directly if they are in the second level, or indirectly if they are somewhere lower in the hierarchy. It's a bit as if, starting from the Grandmaster Clock, the proper time percolates down the hierarchy. Finally, to finish up this video, let me just say what kind of clock we can find at each level of the hierarchy. At the bottom of the hierarchy, that is, at positions of the tree formed by the master-slave hierarchy that are leaf nodes, we always find ordinary clocks. Intermediate clocks, which are neither at the bottom nor at the top, are always boundary clocks. And the Grandmaster Clock? Well, it can be either a boundary clock or an ordinary clock. 